Good morning, Conference. Shamila Malik, Northwest District, Manchester, Withingshaw, Altringham Branch President. Proposal to change Rule 23C branches. Immediate family who are in membership cannot be elected as both branch president, branch secretary, and or branch treasurer. Rationale, not good practice to have immediate family elected to these positions. Now, over uh, some time now, we're experiencing a lot of problems in the branches where family members have got all the positions, treasurers, uh, vice president, president, or we've got one person holding two positions. Now, when it comes to organising meetings or transfer of documents, change over handovers, we're struggling. We're struggling a lot to get hold of people. And to be honest, this is not really good in practice, and it's a conflict of interest. And as we know, many commissioning, like the charities commissioning bodies, you are not really allowed to have any family members all running together to look at um, accounts or trustees, etc. So, in such situations, I think, I know there are many branches who have difficulty in finding other people to take these positions, but maybe it's time to merge those branches or even to go branchless. But we can't keep going on like this, so please support this motion. Thank you. Do you have a second there to the amended motion? Hold on, point of clarification. Thank you, Mr. President, conference. I um, just want to point a clarification on the wording of this um, rule change. So it says you can't be elected as both branch president and secretary, but can it be the same person? So can the same person be branch secretary and president and treasurer? But, but it doesn't say that. Can I come and answer the question? It's actually saying that immediate family who are in membership cannot be elected as both. So it's saying you can't be elected as both president and treasurer or secretary as tre or treasurer. Hold on. Point of clarification again. I am the same person. I'm not immediate family to myself. I am that one person. So it's not clear. So in that rule, I'll re I interpret that rule as that could be branch secretary, president and treasurer, I'm the same person. I'm not immediate family to myself, so it didn't exclude me from doing all three jobs. I think there is a rule that only one person can stand for one position. But I need some clarity on that. OK. Peter, do you want to go up? No. OK, next speaker. Have you got a seconder yet? Your seconder is yet. Yeah. Sasha Patel, Rochdale Bury, President. President Conference. I rise to stand to second this motion. Um, the examples given by Shamala, um, there's some other ones I'd like to follow. And Jason, I think you're absolutely right. In my particular example, um, experience rather, one person was basically the same president, the same secretary, and the same treasurer. There was difficulties um, which resulted in doing the handover at the end of the AGMs. Um, and obviously it only got resolved because our president, Stuart, got involved. And it, that was like s almost six months after the AGM. I think it's in the best interest of all our members and the federation and to stop the malpractices that can result off the back of one person having this closed club. My example I can talk about, I've been paying into this federation for 13 years and I thought it was a charity with no benefits. It's only last year did I find out that actually this federation offers me a hell of a lot more than just a charitable cause, um, which is why I've got more actively involved this year. 
Um, it's, it's almost like it was the best kept secret. And that's because we had all these silos operating um, and keeping people like myself away from the seats that can make a difference. So please support this motion and look after the interest of our members and the Federation. Thank you. Peter. It's amended motion. Conference, uh, I know that Jason uh, is not a family member of himself, but please remember that National Council interprets these rules, and the sentiment is quite clear. You can't have one person controlling everything, including the voluntary fund, uh, and you can't really have husband and wife, for example, uh, controlling the voluntary fund and the branch, and perhaps using it as their own... Um, private current account, which has happened in the past uh, and quite frequently uh, by having different members uh, having these positions, uh, that, that means that there is a more, uh, more accountability of not only the operation of the branch but also the operation of the branch voluntary fund. Uh, and let's face it, that, that money is uh, in ownership, as Rule 13 says, it belongs to those who are contributing. So let's not get hang up over whether Jason is a family member of himself. We all know what the sentiment is here. The sentiment is that one person or a husband and wife shouldn't be able to control everything within a branch. Thank you. Any more speakers? Yeah, next speaker. John Lowman, life member, formerly Barker and Ilford and Wolfen Forest Branch. For 15 years, I was president of Barking, Ilford and Wolfen Forest Branch. And for those 15 years, my wife was the secretary. It worked very well. I didn't have to wait for her to come in for the cash and carry. She was there. We talked at any time about the branch problems. We talked about meetings. We got together and we did it. And I think this is absolutely silly. I'm sure that you're going to be ruining a barrel full of apples for the sake of one rotten one. I don't really know what's behind it. When I was branch secretary and my wife was branch, when I was branch president and my wife branch secretary, we did not control the meeting except for the democratic process. Now, what we need to do is train people to do the job properly. I don't know what your AGMs are like, but there's never a queue for the president, there's never a queue for the secretary, there's never a queue for the treasurer. It's your do it again. I'm actually the treasurer of Barking and Havering branch, which it is now. I've retired, I'm a life member, I've moved away. I can't get rid of it. In order to keep South End branch going, when their treasurer retired, I took that over as well. South End branch president is Graham Cook. South End Secretary is Adrian Cook, father and son. That would be another branch that would be dismissed if this goes through. I can't ask you to withdraw all because it would be amended. Vote against it, please. Next speaker. Fairness Sheikh, District, uh, Scottish District President. Um, I want to preface this by putting it out there that Scotland and Ireland are branchless districts and as such we will be abstaining from voting so our vote will not count. None of, no one from Scotland and Ireland will vote on this motion. Uh, we're not here to di dictate what happens at branch level. Having said that, whilst we may not be in the EU, does this motion breach human rights of an individual? Just because an individual is father and son, husband and wife, brother and sister, 
are, are those individuals competent to do the job? And if they're not competent to do the job, that's a different matter, and we have procedures in place to potentially remove them, if possible. However, if they are competent to do that job, are we breaching their human rights? So that needs to be clarified before we actually pass this motion. I understand the sentiment of this motion. I understand there's certain branches have had problems, but there's other branches where it has worked. But we can't pass, uh, unfortunately, we can't pass this motion without getting that clarity. Well, look, luckily for a conference, we've actually got the clarity, so we know that it doesn't breach human rights. Okay, next speaker. Um, <clears throat> Mukesh Patel, London District, Richmond Kingston branch. Um, as you will see, the amended motion was brought in by London District. What we've done, we've just added another extra layer of protection from misuse of power and fraud, malpractice, whatever you think. I mean, it's, I'm not, we're not saying that it has happened in the Federation, but this is just a precautionary measure for future incidents, which might happen or might not. Being a treasurer, my main point is the branch treasury ship. I think if a husband and wife, if a husband is say, a president and a wife becomes a treasurer, that's a conflict, conflict of interest. I think it's not the right thing. It's common sense. Guys, just think. It's common sense. I know some, uh, there was an argument, a previous speaker said, that we haven't got enough people to take the roles to take the position, but then we got the mechanism that the district will come in or the MSM will help you yeah. if you haven't got anyone to look after. So what, what you know, I mean, this is uh, just a tidying up exercise. So please support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Michael Garner, still a national council, I think. Southeast District, several branches. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure what this happens when um, this, this goes through, um, because I'm the local uh, branch as a president, secretary, uh, treasurer, and something else. What else do we do? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so if this goes through, does that mean the, the branch collapses then? Because there's no one else. I can't honestly say, and I've said it before, there's no one else. There's only me and my, I did say my brother, but I meant my son, and one other person ever comes to once a year at the AGM. So I just want to know, it, it, do I need to clear, clarify this? If it does go forward, then I have to stand down as branch president, sec treasurer, secretary, and everything else. <laughs> it's just a question, and I think so. If it does go, I think we should vote against the SOI Phil. Thank you. Yeah, Peter will give some clarification. Uh, Mike, uh, clarification on that. Uh, as with the uh, previous uh, motion, it falls to the district council to assist, either by appointing or uh, helping with a treasurer uh, for your branch so that you are no longer the president, the secretary and the treasurer and holding the checkbook of a branch that may or may not hold meetings. That is a responsibility of your district to support. Next speaker. Ravi Rajan, London District. I am not down, come down here to oppose or against, but one thing that you have to remember, one thing, I am a membership man, if two members paid their membership, you have to protect their right as well. So when you are voting this, remember that, yeah, because both, whether they are father and son or daughter or doesn't matter, but both of them paid membership fee. Think about it. Thank you. No more speakers. Do you want to do you want to sum up? Yeah. 
Um, just to say that this is not a hidden agenda. It is a protection of our branches and moving forward. And it is time that we do take this up and have this change. We are just looking out. So we do not, if we've learned from mistakes, we've got to rectify them. So please, as Peter Wagg has said, the senior official has also explained what it is. I think you should all support this motion 100%. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, conference ready to vote. So we're ready to vote. Okay, vote now. Oh, that's lost.